Barak the Yahweh, Barak the Yahweh Shai, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto our Heavenly Father Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekakudash, that's Yahweh, which is the name of our Heavenly Father. All right, Bahasham is in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the name of the only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Once again, Bahasham means in the name of, and the Rakakodash is the Holy Spirit. So that's Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit, or in the Holy Spirit. Shalom to our apostles and our elders that taught us this truth and that are ruling well through the Spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you believers. All right, uh, Salakia, Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers, all right, that has it your lives to edify the believers, that are putting your lives on the line to help edify the elect of the nation of Israel, all right, through breaking down these scriptures the correct way, teaching the truth the correct way, all right. Shalom to you believers, you Akim, you Akwathim, and you children that are listening and learning. Now, we recently saw, you know, the fires that took place within Maui, all right, within Hawaii, all right, Maui is one of the islands, all right, located in Hawaii. And the de devastation, all right, of those particular fires, you know, how badly burned it looked, you know, it's, that place was scorched. All right, and Hawaii is supposed to be somewhere that's tropical. It's somewhere that's that's a, 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 a huge vacation and tourist attraction because of the beauty of the land. All right, it gained a popularity. All right, of travelers from all over the world wanting to travel there because it's a place of paradise. All right, it's beautiful. But however, all right, we got to see. All right, the destructive force of fire and how strong and powerful art right, it can be. All right, and how it can sweep through a paradise. All right, and make it look like a desolate wilderness. All right, a devastation. Now, you know, uh, is this a, a destruction that was caused by, you know, man? All right, was it a direct energy weapon? You know, was it was it uh, uh, something that happened accidentally? All right. In which, you know, giving the wake of the times that we're in, you know, with the whole global warming and the great reset and 15 minute cities and all of that. And, you know, uh, uh, the rich wanted to escape the devastation of the mainland, which is America. All right. I honestly believe and I speak as a man, you know. That this was something that was planned, but however, it's still the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because the Heavenly Father can use the wicked as a sword, all right, to bring devastation and destruction. So, do I think that this was something that was accidental, you know, or something that was coincidental? No, I don't believe that it was coincidental or accidental. You know, I don't believe. What the news tell you, oh, it was a tree that fell on the line that sparked it. And OK, how many other events when a tree fell on the line in Maui and it never led to this? Now, if you type in my uh, Maui for sale and fire, you know, just those four words. All right. Many different articles will pop up on how you have our right, investors that are uh, aggressively all right, trying to get the people whose land was damaged to sell their property, you know? And why is there such an aggressive force that's put on these landowners, all right, to sell their properties, okay? So these are just the top stories, all right? I'm, gonna, I'm just reading the top stories from Google. It says, Maui fire victims face aggressive land offers from investors and realtors amid devastation. That's from WPDE I-15. I don't know if that's a local news station there. 
All right, USA Today, Maui land for sale. Locals fear they will be bought out after fires. All right, um, PBS, after fires, Hawaii vows to protect Maui landowners from pressure to sell. And I could just imagine what they're going through. These are people that are going through grief. They lost loved ones. All right, I believe the last time that I heard, it was 106 people, and they'll find more. All right, they got those special dogs that are trained to go and sniff out things, and that's if they can, if they can distinguish the charred bodies, all right, from the charred, decayed wood and other things that are over there. All right, because those fires are raging, man. It was horrific, you know, to see. It looks like something from an apocalyptic movie. All right, quite, quite scary. All right, and it makes you fear the Heavenly Father and also take into account the message of what the scriptures say. All right, and in particular, I'm thinking of 2 Peter, the third chapter, the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. When these nukes come, you ain't going to know exactly when or, or what time they're going to come so that you can, what date, so that you can properly prepare to avoid it. All right, you're going to pick a location, find a location upon the earth, all right, in which these missiles won't hit, all right, and think that you're safe. Man, when those missiles come, the only place you're going to be, you can be that's safe is off of the planet earth, all right, because those things are going to damage a lot of places, and the earthquakes and the, and, the, and the crashing and thunderings from those nuclear missiles hitting is going to be frightening in itself, all right? But the shock waves, you know, the, the, the nuclear fallout, the nuclear winter, you know, that's going to kill a lot of people as well. So imagine the people that are in the, di the direct zone of impact. Man, send those chariots and deliver us if we're worthy. Uh, another one, this is from the NPR, says Hawaii governor vows to block land grabs as fire ravage Maui rebuilds. Uh, it says Maui residents with wildfire damage homes are being targeted by real estate scams, officials warn. I'll read two more. This one is from uh, an article called Dwell. Predatory real estate investors are reportedly already eyeing Maui. Just so quick, you know, it just happened. You know, how's it, how's this happening so suddenly, you may ask? Maui locals worry wealthy outsiders will buy out their destroyed towns after wildfires and you telling me that these inv investors are scared that a fire could rage through the land and burn up the the, the property that they would invest in the multi-million dollars and you know all of the things that they plan on building up on maui you're not afraid that a fire will come through and devastate all of that so just asking those particular questions make you raise your antennas all right, was this something that was done purposely? Was this something that was done purposely for the purpose of covering someone's field and taking it, all right, removing the landmark? And the scripture says in Deuteronomy, the 27th chapter, verse 17, it says, Curse be he that removeth his, his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amon. So curse is he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And the rich lead banking families ruling through America are guilty of that. All right, let's first start with the removing of the Native Americans. All right, with, uh, I believe that's, uh, what's his name? President Andrew. All right, uh, I can just type it in. Andrew Jackson, that's it, Andrew Jackson. And the Indian Removal Act. And that was uh, the Indian Removal Act of 1830. The Indian Removal Act was signed in law by President Andrew Jackson on May 28, 1830, authorizing the president to grant unsettled lands west of the Mississippi in exchange for Indian lands within existing state uh, borders. A few tribes went peacefully, but many resisted the relocation. Yeah, they was kicking your ass, too. All right, you had to invent something called the Gatling gun because you couldn't keep up with them. 
All right, because they were jacking your ass up. All right, but that, you know, has put a lot of blood on your hands. It have cursed you. All right, because you killed, not only did you take their lands and you're cursed because of that, but you also killed and took the lives of many so-called Native Americans and Seminole Indians. All right, and, and because of that, hey, look, this land is cursed. That's the reason why this land doesn't yield all right, the the um the uh the proper force, all right, that it was yielding when, when Gad was here. I'm sure that the food that they were growing was so ginormous, it was so big, it was succulent, it was healthy. You had to invent something called um you had to invent something called GMOs. And so, like, I'm looking for a particular scripture. It's in the book of Job. I'll find it. You know. So this is the book of Job, the 31st chapter. And beginning at verse 38, if my land cry against me or the furrows, likewise, thereof complain, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life. Let thistles grow instead of wheat and cockles instead of barley. The word of Job is ended. So this is happening to Esau Edom as a curse. All right. You have caused the owners of the land to lose their lives in order to gain the land. All right. And when you further on. All right. You did it to the children of Israel, but then you did it to the other nations as well. All right. When you go into scriptures like the book of um. Habakkuk, the second chapter, it speaks on that. All right. You you have uh, uh, brought a, a evil upon your house through evil covetousness. All right. An evil desire to, to have something that belongs into others. And this is something similar to what Ahab did when you go into the book of first Kings, the 21st chapter. All right. And it. Begins at verse one. It says, and it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, uh, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So what Ahab did was he began to covet this 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 uh, field that belongs into uh, his neighbor, all right, into Naboth. All right, a fellow Israelite. And Ahab speaking to Nabal, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. So basically, you, you feel the, the, the strong desire or sense of, of, of ownership or need just because it's close to your house. And I will give thee for it a, a bit better vineyard than it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. All right, which um, if, if the owner thereof was willing to sell it, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. OK. However, Nabal said, hell no. You know, why would I give away my inheritance? You know, that belongs to my father. When I when I pass on, it's going to go to my children. All right. They'll have a place within Israel. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his, his house heavy because, you know, back then you didn't pay land taxes. You know, if you own the land, you own the land. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. So he came into his house angry. All right. And, and um, it says in the NLT, sullen. All right, let's look up the word sullen. The meaning of sudden, sullen is bad temper and sulky, gloomy. All right, he's, he's, he's sad because he's he's coveting it. I want this feel. You know, you can just imagine the things that are going through his mind. It says, because of the words of Nabaoth, the Jezreelite had spoken to him, for he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my father 
and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. So he's so sick about it to the point where it's so upset to the point where he, he can't even eat. So here come his wicked ass wife, all right, which was a Hamite. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he, he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Aren't you the king? You know, basically, you know, man the hell up. Aren't you the king? You can do whatever you want. And that's not the truth. King can't can't commit adultery. A king ain't supposed to. A king is supposed to be the standard of keeping the laws of the heavenly father. King can't just do wickedly just because he's the king. Arise, eat bread and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote later letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. And Ahab didn't should have put this bitch in check. Hey, look, chill, chill out, settle down. You, you acting out of order. It's not your place to do anything. All right. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with the, with the seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two, two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme Yahweh and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. And, and this was a heathen woman, so but she was acquainted with the ways of Israel. She knew that you were supposed to honor the name of Yahweh. Uh, she knew that in, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, but however, she was a heathen and wicked. Okay, and didn't care for the laws of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And the men of his city, even of the elders and the nobles, who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel has uh, sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she, which she had sent unto them, they proclaim a fast and set Nebuchadnezzar on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, all right, two low level, all right, wicked men, and set before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Nebuchadnezzar, in the presence of the people, saying, Nebuchadnezzar did blaspheme Yahweh and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Nebuchadnezzar is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Nebuchadnezzar was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, uh, take possession of the vineyard of Nebuchadnezzar, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Nebuchadnezzar is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Nebuchadnezzar was dead, that Abraham, uh, Ahab rose to go down to the vineyard of Nebuchadnezzar, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. So therefore he consented unto it. He never put his wife to death all right, for breaking the law. Okay. And the word of Yahweh came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Arise, go down, meet Ahab, the king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he is going down to possess it. And what about the, the, the seed and the lineage of Naboth? All right. So this was completely wickedness. This was a conspiracy. This was a plot. 
It says, Thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus said Yahweh, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus said Yahweh, And the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick the blood even thine. So, the actions of Jezebel, uh, which was a heathen, and Ahab, all right, within their conspiracy and their wickedness, is the same way that Esau Edom, all right, thinks today, all right, and plots and conspire. All right, however, back then, you know, Ahab was, was an Israelite, but that was still wicked. All right, that was that was not something that was becoming of an Israelite. But however, Esau Edom does things like that today. All right, through their desire and coveting fields, they they perform uh, uh, acts such as this. All right, the scripture says in Micah two and two, and this is from the NLT. When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man of his property, stealing his family's inheritance. So this is what Ahab did. But however, that's something that is of the heathens. All right. And Esau has mastered and perfected. All right. This. So they find particular ways to get land. All right, they find a particular way to cheat a person out of their inheritance, even if that means that they have to kill a person or people and have zero regard for lives. All right, this is how they got control of the world. The scriptures say, because the, the, the earth belongs into Israel, the kingdom of heaven belongs into Israel. But like it says within Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter in the 8th verse, it says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So this is how you got the kingdom through rape, robbery and murder. All right, the book of... Um, The book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, and verse 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken by force. So you forcefully take lands, you forcefully take resources, you know, you have robbed, you know, the, 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 the lands, you know, you have robbed people of their treasures, you have robbed them of their resources. The book of Isaiah, the 10th chapter, verse 13. By the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent. And I have removed the bonds of the people and have robbed their treasures and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand have found the nest of riches of the people. And as one gather of eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth and there was none that remained or move the wing or open the mouth or peep. So there's many different ways that you do it. You, you have went through with your military. You have used weapons, you know, of, of destruction, of mass destruction. You use, you know, uh, uh, infected or disease blankets. All right, these are just the things that Esau has done in history. Or you use your, your banking practices. Uh, your international monetary fund, your your uh, world bank. You know, you convince nations to take out loans and in the return, they have to give you their resources and a percentage of their GDP. So they'll never get out of debt. So eventually you go in and because they become so in debt to you to the point where it, it basically becomes yours and they just becomes the, the servants of the land. Or you'll, you'll, you'll set a place ablaze, you know, and go in and, and, and buy up the land. 
These are just some of the many different reasons why the nations of the earth are rising up against you. And the time is going to come when you are going to experience a world of judgment for your actions. It says right here in, in Job 15 and 34, for the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate and a fire shall consume all right, the tabernacles of bribery. All right, you try to uh, 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 bribe, <laughs> you know, as well. All right, give, give presents. Here it is, you set the whole thing up. But you come through as if you're you're doing a person a favor. Let me let me let me buy that destroyed land up off you. And then there's other ways that you bribe too. The definition of bribe persuades someone to act in one's favor, typically illegally or dishonestly, by a gift of money or other or right, inducement. Reading on, it says they conceive mischief and bring forth vanity in their belly, prepare deceit. So you can't trust these devils. So anyways, the time is going to come because this was a precursor to the destruction of, of America. All right, Babylon, the whore, according to the scriptures. So there's going to be trouble in paradise. All right, this... The, a like the scripture see in the book of Joel 2 and 3 a fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth the land is as the garden of Eden be before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yet and nothing shall escape them so this is speaking about the thermonuclear destruction when it comes through to devastate and destroy which are known in the scriptures as the, the instruments of death they're known in the scriptures as the weapons of Yahweh's indignation. All right, it says that 200 million nuclear warheads are going to impact. So you can just imagine the destruction. So before them, the, the earth is as a paradise, but after them, you know, a desolate wilderness, such as the image of what you've seen within Maui. The, all right, the Maui Awi. Now, what is uh, Eden? All right, Eden is paradise. That's what it means. The book of 2 Ezra 3 and 5, and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hand, and did his breathing to him the breath of life, gave him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and he was made a living, living before thee. And thou ledest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forth. So the word Eden. I done within the Hebrew. All right, means means pa uh, paradise, means pleasure. And there was a particular plot. So out of the whole paradise, there was a, a plot or a region that was the best. All right. <laughs> so the earth is, is is like a paradise before the great destruction, before the thermonuclear destruction. But afterwards, certain parts of the earth is going to be like a desolate wilderness. And the main place is going to be here within Babylon, the great hole. The book of 2nd Ezra 15 and 41, fire and hell and flying swords and many waters and all fields shall be full. Full of what? Full of soldiers, full of chaos, all right, full of war, full of confusion, all right, full of armies fighting against each other, all right, clashing and all rivers and the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and walls and mountains and hills and trees and woods and grass of the meadows and their corn. So just imagine walls of fire just sweeping through the land and just destroying everything. I mean, <laughs> before the fire even reaches there, you have a hot wind that already blows everything off of its foundation. You know, buildings, you know, houses, you know, cars being flipped over trees. So a lot of people, before they even get hit with the fire, all right, before they even get uh, uh, um, incinerated with the fire, they're already going to be getting hit with shrapnel, debris, you know. Uh, um, and, and remember, you got 
people, you got you got uh, uh, old men, old women, you got young men, young women, you got infants that are going to be here. All right, when this destruction happened. All right, baby strollers being blued, fucking baby flying out of the stroller. All right, you're going to have old ass men and women getting knocked out of their hover rounds. All right, and then the the, 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 the sweeping destruction is going to come. People are going to be in their cars getting burnt up and incinerated. All right, turned into ashes, instant cremation. Reading on, um, it says, and they shall break down the cities and walls and mountains and hills, trees of the wood and grass of the meadows and their corn. And they shall go steadfastly to Babylon and make her afraid. And they shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all the wrath shall they pour out with her. Then shall the dust and the smoke go up unto heaven and all that be about her shall be well her same thing that's written within revelation 18 chapter so how can you say there's no validity in the apocrypha when the apocrypha communicates the same things that the bible communicates and why because it's a part of the bible too it's the word of the heavenly father the inspired word of the heavenly father so what happened to maui the maui awi is going to eventually happen to the whore. All right, it's just a precursor. It's just an example of the great destruction that the Heavenly Father can cause. Now, in this particular event, all right, all right, he 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 brought it about the way that it happened in Maui. But when it happens to this great whore, it's going to be through thermonuclear destruction. So, with that, you're not supposed to covet lands. All right, Esau Edom is guilty of coveting lands, all right, and even going to the brink of destroying people, their homes, and their lives in order to go through and grab up the land because they don't really care for lives. They don't really care for the, for people. All right, all they care is for opportunity and what pleased them because they're right now that they're, they're living. They don't believe in the Heavenly Father. They don't believe in souls and spirit. They don't believe in anything. They just believe that they are alive right now and they and they can seize the opportunity but all of that is going to lead to you being paid back for your wickedness especially the wickedness done to the israelites and then also the great judgment of the whore all right the 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 fire that's going to rage on all right is going to be similar to that in maui but even worse so with that i truly hope that this lesson was edifying all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone that taught us this truth and who are ruling well. Peace and love, say, taste, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Shalom, Abad, Babal, Kwambakiyam. Shalom.